p.m. Uh, roll call. Uh, Steve Hakenen, Lake Enchantment. Bethany Cody, Lake Enchantment. Linda Winslow, Norwood Street. Eric Power, Staff Planner. Jason McCarthy, Planning and Zoning Administrator. So we have Jim and Denny are excused tonight. But we do have a quorum. Yeah. Approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Um, minutes from previous meeting. Oh, let's vote on that. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, meeting. Minutes from the previous meeting, January 24th. Yeah, under uh, 6B, the short-term rental discussion. Underneath that, the uh, synopsis of that discussion was uh, McCarthy explained that although this project was already reviewed and approved as July of 23, it was a defect in the public notification. I think that was for reference to a previous meeting. You're correct. Okay, thank you. I will edit that. So, oh, um, edit. Linda Winslow wasn't present on your. You have, you have me in two spots. Present and absent. Will do. You are excused. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to make a motion. Yeah, other than that, I think the uh, previous agenda minutes are correct, so I will uh, uh, move to approve them. I think I can support that. Even though I wasn't here. I'm not sure how formal we are. Do we have to all approve that one? Um, you get a motion and a second. Linda Winslow is a second. And yes, you can. Okay. All approve? Yes. Yes. All in favor. All in favor? Yep. <laughs> I don't have any notes. I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> We're just having fun, Bethany. It's yeah. okay, right? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Moving on to public comment. Those wishing to speak can come up now. We'll also have a chance to speak during the agenda item. Yep, Mr. Taylor's here. He's a petitioner for uh, property rezoning, so we will get to that. Okay, doesn't look like any public comment right now. Moving on to new business. 6A, zoning map amendment public hearing request. The proposed zoning map amendment of the subject parcel from rural residential to developmental district per the Marquette Township Zoning Ordinance, Article 25, Changes and Amendments, Section 25.02. Um, parcel tax ID numbers 5208-018-016-00. Applicant, Penn Inc., 892 County Road 480, Marquette, Michigan. No further discussion, Jason? Yep, so we received a complete application um, from Mr. Uh, uh, from Penn Inc., um, <laughs> who is here represented tonight. Um, I think Steve may have been on the Planning Commission the last time that this was brought up in 2017. Um, I think he may be the only Planning Commission that was around at that time. Uh, the difference with this application, as opposed to the previous application that was submitted by Mr. Taylor, is that the master plan has changed to include that parcel in the future land use map as a development district parcel. So in, in this case, uh, previous to this application, in 2017, it was still on the future land use map listed as uh, rural residential. So as a result of his uh, interest in developing that property in, in a commercial manner, that did get changed in the master plan for the future land use map. And as you know, anytime that you look at um, a, a zoning map amendment, the first thing you should do when considering it is to look at the future land use map. So um, this is the parcel. It's Kitty Corner. Um, well, not Kitty Corner, but it's you got the Meyer gas station, which is shown undeveloped here, and then uh, the commercial development to the east. This is the commercial driveway uh, owned and maintained by uh, Mr. Lindbergh and his LLCs. You have some residential lots 
uh, to the west, but they are larger parcels, some of them. Um, and then this area here was a stream relocation that was done some time ago. So this shows the area that really is not to be touched because it's part of a, you know, an area where you can't really develop it because of slope or wetlands. <clears throat> and so this is the developable, well, most of the developable space. You can see some slope here. That might be a challenge. Um, and then Mr. Taylor submitted, and you'll find, found in your packet, um, some reasonings as to why he would like to rezone the property. So I won't go through those necessarily unless you have any questions on them, but you can ask him in a second here. So this is the existing zoning in the area. You have rural residential, this lighter color. Development district, which is the orange, and then general business in the red. And the development district, by design, is supposed to serve as a buffer between uh, rural residential, or any residential for that matter, and uh, some of the general business uh, zoning. So it's kind of a lesser intense zoning district, although a lot of the land uses that are available um, in the general business district are also permitted in the d development district, provided that if it's adjacent to residential zoning or land use that a public hearing is held. At this time, we don't know what's being proposed again, so we'll have to uh, navigate that. And this is the existing future land use map. And you can see here that this parcel was included in the future land use map this time. Of course, we update our future land use map every five years. And there were a couple other parcels in the area that were amended down in this area, I believe. But typically from five year to five year, there's not too much difference unless you have something like I, I suspect, um, you know, where the long year project is and perhaps where the well road or the, excuse me, the um, fly ash. The fly ash road. You know, those are areas that we really haven't had a chance to take a look at yet because they've been held for so long under one property owner. So I'm really excited about this master plan update because we have an opportunity to look at some properties that we really haven't had to look at from a development standpoint in, the, in you know previous years. Um, this should have been up with number two and three. Sorry, but the reasonings there. Number three, list any other reasons to support the zoning change. There are two companies that are interested in the property. Development district would be the best use of the property. And that's per Mr. Taylor's request. And here are some survey and the legal description provided. Now, these are survey sketches, but they're not stamped and signed. Uh, maybe the one by Mr. Lindbergh was, um, but that shows the area that was used uh, on the, the right hand photo shows the area that was uh, mitigated likely for the uh, relocation of that stream. And then the residual would be Mr. Taylor's property to the west, including the house. So it currently has a home sitting on it and it's being used in a residential fashion. So was that mitigated with the uh, with Eagle or DNR or something like that? To when they took wetlands, they had to create wetlands or or maintain the wetlands there. I'm not sure, Steve, um, exactly who permitted it or what permit it was under, but it was done to facilitate the commercial development there and to make it sure that it was done right. So would that have any impact on putting that parcel into a development district? Development district then. Um, that's one of the things that the Planning Commission will have to consider. Um, if you read through the zoning ordinance, um, you, know, you have a number of things that the Planning Commission uh, is required to look at. So an environmental assessment, although it hasn't been submitted, is certainly something that um, you know, the petitioner should think of or at least have some explanation on you know, what the limits may be. Typically, you're limited by slope in grade. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously the storm water would be an issue where it's going to be, I don't know if it can hold or if you're able to drain into that 
so that that would all be uh, items that need to be uh, looked at um, for any future development on the site <coughs> beyond its current use it, is that parcel that three-quarter acre parcel has that been graded and, and created into something it looks like there's some real even slopes around there and real even grades and then a flat section and, and then I'm having a hard time seeing it but is, is that a, a, a hill or a, a hole that's a, a hole going down into that wetland area and we're looking at one foot contour intervals there well if they're one or two seven eight. <clears throat> so we're talking about ten feet deep A scale on this thing. Ten, ten. Yeah, those are two foot contours. Yeah, that's some that's some real gentle slopes there at sixty one inch equals sixty foot or whatever the scale is on yeah. this. Okay. So tonight's meeting, however, is to schedule the public hearing, which staff has recommended we do. We do have a complete application submitted by Mr. Taylor. He does have the right to petition to rezone the property. And Without getting into a lot of the minutia about the review, tonight's meeting is really designed to uh, submit an application and fee established by the Township Board, which he's done. Uh, the Zoning Administrator shall transmit the application to the Planning Commission, uh, who will set a public hearing date and cause the notice of public hearing to be published as outlined in Section 50, or 2504, which is essentially just to say that it'll be advertised in the newspaper and anybody within 300 feet of the uh, of the subject property would be notified very similar to the last process that we went through um, so that's you know you can ask mr. Taylor we always advise the applicant of a, something like this to be present at both the scheduling of the public hearing and then of course at the public hearing but if there's anything you'd like to ask him tonight that's fine um, but really it's just to set the public hearing and we believe, at least staff believes, that he's submitted an application that's complete. I'd like to ask Mr. Taylor a question or two. Um, Come on up to the... Sure. Name and address? Please. That's helpful. Hi, my name is Robert Taylor. I'm the president of Penn Incorporated, which owns the property at 420 Brickyard. Uh, my address is 892 County Road 480, Marquette, Michigan. Um, so you you hold that property under Penn Inc. that you're looking for the rezoning. I noticed that you also have another piece of property there, at Penn Inc., with that house that is abandoned. Uh, Does anybody house, live there? There's a house sitting there. Yes. Has anybody lived there for a while? Nope. That's your. Do you have any intent with that property? Yeah, but it has nothing to do with this meeting at this point. No, I understand that. Yeah. Okay. But I can ask you, right? You can ask me. It's, okay. it's, it's zone development district right now. So. Okay. So you have some intent to do something with that? Is it zone development district there? I thought it was zoned a different district. That or is it commercial? commercial? General business. Uh, it looks like it's... It is red. Hey? General business. Yeah, general business. General business, yeah. Okay. So the single family home is a non-conforming use on that property. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've all known that Mr. Taylor has been trying to market that property for some time and has kept it in a condition that at least from the county building codes department standpoint is satisfactory and not requiring demolition This would be to turn this into the orange. So right. development. And then district. pass there to the well, I would say to the top, yeah. To the north? Yeah. No, no. It was only for this only for this parcel. For that's what he owns at this point, right? Yes, ma'am. And then we potentially we would have rezone just rezone the rest along that road then. No. No, we wouldn't until someone asked. Correct. There, there's a there's a power line there, so it's pretty hard to develop anything. Is there. that is that what it is? And there's a power line that runs through my okay. property also. Okay. Yep. All right. so and that, that creek and that cr creek continues through, and it's got a pretty big ravine there. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, there's no smoke. That's just my question because I see that potentially becoming a, you can call it a corridor, you know, a road heading in that direction and crossing behind that in the future 50 years. Yeah. 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 Hard telling, not knowing. Hard telling, not knowing. It's a guess. Sometimes I'm educated. Well, historically, this has kind of been the western frontier of commercial development. Mm -hmm. I would think that within the next, you know, 10 to 15 years that there probably wouldn't be a lot of, there wouldn't be a lot more adjustment to the zoning map. Unless you're talking about the property that's more situated along the highway here, but we're zoned pretty well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a lot of undeveloped property mm -hmm. that's still open for commercial development. I just want us to be thinking in those directions because what happened 50 years ago or 40 years ago, we forgot to put in the access roads, maybe forgot some poor choice. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, think, I think we want to be prepared, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, I, I do think we need to think 40 years yeah, well, we'll get into that um, a little bit with our master plan update. So that's all that really was just my question. That's, that's why when I sold the property to Gordon Foods, I maintained an access, which, which I proposed to the township when I first developed that property to have an access road all the way across, but they turned it down. So It's a new board and new times. Yeah. New but, I've, but I've owned this property for 25 years, so it's only taken 25 years to get a change to the master plan. So. Okay, well, yeah. moves on, right? Yep. <laughs> so it does it before we're, while we're still here. <laughs> yep, hopefully. Okay, so do we have any other questions? No, no other further discussion? Questions, Steve? Oh, good. So we make a motion on this one? Looking for a motion Looking to, for a motion. well, staff recommends that the public hearing on the matter be scheduled for? Wednesday, March 13th. Correct. 7 p.m. I'll second. Do we have to vote on this? Nope. No? Okay. Oh, you have to vote, but not a roll call oh, vote. Yeah, okay. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Taylor, we will see Aye. you again on the 13th at 7 p.m. And when does the public notice go, Jason? Uh, at least 15 days prior to the meeting date. So uh, you'll get a copy of the letter because you're petitioner. Yep. Petitioner, yep. Okay. Anything else? I would expect similar turnout from the last time and uh, yeah, I would too. I think that the environmental assessment, you know, just being a, a, so, a coach to you might be something that at least to broach. So here's the deal. <clears throat> no matter what happens with it, if you change the zoning to what is in the master plan, you still have to approve whatever's going to go there. True. Right. So mm -hmm. it's up to them to deal with that. Um, that property where the wetland is now was my property which I gave to Lindbergh to be able to move the creek and put the bridge in to get to Lowe's and Myers and whatnot yeah and that is that was permitted by Eagle what well, was an Eagle at the time DEQ, DEQ. and uh, so that will stay that way forever so the only thing I can do is I own to the toe of the slope which is the very bottom so I could if I wanted to which I it's too costly. I could drive piles to the bottom mm -hmm. and fill it back in, but that's cost prohibitive. And the slope is gradual enough. I mean, it's it's not been an erosion issue since we've done that, and that was done in 2007. Okay. And we can discharge water into there. Good. Because that's what that is made for. That is for state stormwater also. So. Yeah, and if you have any documentation of that, I think that would be helpful to the planning commission but, as but well. But again, it has really nothing to do with rezoning it has more to do with the planning of whatever is going to go in there. True, but it's also in the ordinance for the planning commission to look at those things when sure, considering no, a map that. amendment. Yep. But obviously you put it in there for a reason under the master plan. Because you aren't you aren't in compliance with your own zoning at this point. How is that? Because there's no buffer between the general business and rural residential. 
Well, true, but I don't think that's a well. I'm not just being saying that's. I think that's why the master plan was changed. Right. Yeah, it did effectively provide a buffer in that in that corner there. Yep. So. Okay. For that entire stretch by Oak Hill Estates, there it's not so. Right. Oak Hill. Oh, where the red line is. Yeah. That's a residential right up to general business right there. Mm -hmm. A huge swath. Yeah, it is. So, you know. I'm just saying, if you read your zoning, though, it says that they would like to have a buffer between there and residential, no matter what kind of residential, correct? Where and when feasible, yep. yep. Okay. Well, All right, so I'll see you March 13th. Sounds good. Thanks. See you then. Your time. Okay, hey, moving on to 6B, short-term rental discussion. Review existing zoning regulations for STRs and discuss potential amendments to the zoning ordinance. Matt, presentation. We'll let, we'll let Eric get into this. Um, I was just going to say, since we don't have all of us here tonight, it may be better to hold off. And in fact, I've been uh, out sick pretty much for two weeks with uh, influenza A and haven't done a whole lot of the master plan update which is why it wasn't on the agenda uh, for tonight so um, but I, I would like to hear, Eric has some good information um, just to, to broach the subject and get you guys into um, your thinking mode about STRs yep. so in your packet tonight um, and the information on the screen is going to reflect what's in the packet and to be honest it's probably a little bit more digestible from the packet itself from the original presentation um, where this information comes from is a conference session from the Michigan Association of Planning Conference that Jason and I attended in Traverse City in October. Um, at this session was a lawyer specializing in land use law and then two township representatives from townships right around the Traverse City area. Um, so directly pertaining to short-term rentals. Um, the some of this information, I think we, we as a township are maybe past to some degree. So like this page, for example, talking about what STRs are and what they are not. Um, so what they are not is not residential uses. Um, as the term residential generally excludes that transient aspect. Um, and then there's the case law cited from Michigan Supreme Court. Um, and then also short-term rentals likely do not qualify as accessory or home occupations. Um, however, they are likely commercial in nature and they might fit the, fit the definition of a commercial rental use. Um, so again, I think we're kind of past this point as far as how we have it in our ordinance and how we define it. Um, but again, I thought this was the way they, the way the presenter kind of built this case, um, no pun intended, um, I think was very helpful at kind of seeing it from a, both a ground level and then kind of a thousand foot level as well. Um, he, then he went into kind of the zoning versus police power ordinances. Um, so currently ours obviously falls under the zoning ordinance as we do have a section for it. Um, so you'll see a lot of those aspects there listed under zoning ordinance um, would apply to how we regulate short-term rentals. Um, that police power ordinance, um, again, we don't have a police power ordinance for short-term rentals. However, some of those aspects of the police power ordinance I could see being implemented into the zoning ordinance as, pos as part of some of these possible uh, restrictions that we're talking about. Um, and as you can see at the bottom in bold, um, and this was a point that he drove home, was that a hybrid approach on this is typically best. Um, so something to consider. <clears throat> Before you go on, yep. I was under the impression that short-term rentals were for the applicant. This said that short-term rentals run with the land. So if I sell it, that's still eligible to be a short-term rental. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. I, I was under the impression that, you know, if it was sold, that it, it is, was extinguished, but it's not. No. But it's not. But we can revoke it at any time if they're not following based on performance. Yeah. Or the, the new landowner can, if they wish, revoke the permit or give it back however you want to define that or however you want to term that so is that for most of the work as a zoning ordinance or a police power ordinance, a zoning ordinance. i would say yes okay. um 
and I was looking today through, I don't know if you remember, I think it was in 2022 at this point, where I had put together a report of sorts of the surrounding communities, townships, <coughs> counties in the UP, maybe not directly surrounding Marquette Township, but comparable townships, counties, cities in the UP, and how they deal with them as far as do they require a special use permit, do they require a public hearing, is there a neighbor notification required, things like that. Um, so I was looking through that today and I thought that might be maybe for the next meeting, um, beneficial to update, uh, maybe add to, um, and represent it to the planning commission. So. Right. Yeah. And so then I think this is the, the meat of it here is the way that STRs can be limited. Um, so license caps, separation distances, transfer restrictions, use frequency, max occupancy, and license suspension and revocation. Um, again, with that report of the surrounding municipalities, these are some of the things, like for example, use frequency, I were looking at, um, it's gonna be specific, but St. Ignace. St. Ignace, for example, and this is true with some that I've stayed in, say in Florida, they require a minimum seven seven night stay so you can't rent a place for two or three nights that helps kind of with the transient aspect of it um i don't think we really have that problem here um although i'm not living next to them so i can't really speak for that um license caps obviously that's something that the city has put into place and that's something that we've talked about separation distances could fall right into that as well um so i do believe the city has separation distances uh one per block face however if the block face is a thousand feet or longer you can have two on that block face but they can't be more than i forget the number so many feet or so many feet together um so there's examples of these all over the place um but again this was from that attorney's presentation as far as how communities can limit them so and that again this is all listed in this presentation in a little different format uh, but it is all there so and then the last one here, um, an East Bay Township, that is uh, the township, I think, directly south of Traverse City proper. Um, they were one of the presenters in addition to the attorney. Um, and each of those presenters had their own little section of presentation, and I would be happy to send those along to any of you um, if you wish to saw those, because they really kind of applied the attorney's presentation to their individual community. And in fact, this attorney had worked directly with both those communities. Um, so they, it all jived pretty well. Um, so I am actually in the process of putting some of these numbers together for the township, um, as I think getting that stuff together would be beneficial in kind of exploring what, if any, restrictions we would like to put into place. Um, so again, just stuff to consider. So you have some details on how they, I mean, they're, they're limiting rentals by the average cost of the rent. If it's too high, they won't allow you to rent it? Well, like for example, I, and maybe I should have included this slide too to, for this to make a little more uh, sense in context. Um, East Bay Township had listed the numbers for each of these categories for them. Um, so for like the average rent cost, I think it was like 1600 bucks a month for a one or a one bedroom apartment and then the short term rental cost per week was $2,000 or something like that. So again, they might not be directly comparable since we're talking about two different month lease versus a week lease, but but, 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 but what I'm saying is they use the, they use what that those values in de, as well as others in determining on whether they're going to have short term rentals in that area. Not short-term rentals, but restrictions on those short-term rentals. Yeah, a variable to show how short-term rentals affect the co housing costs. In oh, oh, so, community. so, okay. All right, okay. Because if somebody can make $2,000 in a week, as opposed to $1,600 in a month. That's America, isn't it? That affects, <laughs> that affects. Well, oh, I, I agree. Affordable housing. I agree. The thing is, they really should be looking at it per year because short-term rentals don't necessarily rent 52 weeks out of a year. And we can calculate that yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. And again, and I wish... There's a lot of things to look at. Yeah. It's just a variable. Yeah. yeah. One mm -hmm. of the many variables. So um, the golf course development, planned unit development, mm -hmm. are those two, I 
there are two? I don't even know anymore. I know there were more. There are going to be four, and, and two of them are constructed. Those are, the, those are the state in place, yeah. And so they're short-term rentals? Essentially. So did they have to come and ask us for short-term rental? Yeah, it was part of the PUD. It was part process. of the PUD. Yeah. Okay. okay, so, um, yeah. So they'll be added to our mass, our list eventually. Once they're... Once they're finished. Yeah. Hmm. And again, I w like I said, I wish I would have included the specific numbers from East Bay Township on these metrics. Um, but the one that really stuck out to me was the third one down number of listings. Um, short term rental, I believe, was like 150 to 160 versus their long term rental listings was three. Yeah. So, I mean, there, I think directly right by Traverse City, it's a little bit different than us. However, not too different um, because they've got many, many more uh, long term or excuse me, short term rentals and obviously a little bit more concentrated right around Traverse City, um, whereas ours are a little bit more spread out and we don't have that volume of them. Um, but that one, again, really stuck out to me. Um, another one would be the number of owners investors in short term rentals. So on that one, think like uh, individual or a LLC, whatever you want to say, owning three or four or five. Um, we don't have that issue here. There is, I think, one or two people that own two a piece. Um, so, but not like the Sun Belt. Area. Right. Yes, it's not like large corporations or large companies buying up handfuls of them and turning them into short-term rentals. So, there's money to be made. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just some meat and potatoes for the planning commission to sink their teeth into. And then also included in your packet near the end, it is under correspondence, so I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but it does pertain to this discussion, are those maps that I had printed out for the last meeting that were printed in black and white, <laughs> um, that they are included in color on this one, so they are much easier to read. Um, so. And all of those are current short-term rentals, yep. right? People? Yep. And we don't have any outstanding. I do have one on my desk right now, an application that I have not processed. Um, but at this point, those are all the approved with no outstanding applications, minus the one that I have not processed. Is that for Lars? Cyber. Oh, it's, it's just, you know, Steve, Steve talks about, you know, people can do what they choose within the legal system with their property. Would all like to have long term rentals for the people without a place to live. Yeah, you think about that's 20 something. years that's ago, this just wasn't an issue. I mean, yeah. when you look at Munising, for instance, you know, you have a lot of advertisements for CNAs and uh, some health care, and they can't get people to even apply there because they don't have the housing for, for those folks. You know, us being a college town, you still. Always wait till May and then go find the best apartment you can um, for 500 bucks a month. That's they're gone. Changed. <laughs> so, um, but we do have some good news coming up under correspondence, which I think will help us out a, a lot. Yeah. So, so are we going to continue the short-term rental discussions next meeting when Jim and Denny are here? Yeah, that in, in, in the realm of the entire master plan update. I, I think we're gonna spend a lot of time on the housing section of that and, and really come up with some um, policies and, and provisions that will help curtail some of these things. That's my hope. I think it's gonna take a while. I, I think that, I, th I think everyone has a picture of what housing needs to look like and you know, I, I've been hearing people say we're going to build senior housing because then the seniors are going to sell their houses. I am of the belief that the seniors are not going to sell their houses. They want to stay in place. So we'll, we'll see who's right. Yeah. Okay. So there's nothing we need to do for that item. Just no, moving just informational on. at this point. Okay. Well, We'll move on to unfinished business, which there is none at this time. So moving on to correspondence. Um, 8A, Michigan State House Development Authority Housing Readiness Incentive Grant. 
So we did remember telling you about the, um, I apologize for our, our printer. <laughs> What's, had some, uh, What's it doing? <laughs> it's like it took some acid or something. Um, but uh, we did get that fixed, thankfully, so that won't happen again. We've been awarded $50,000 um, from MISHTA to assist us in our master plan update. Actually, it's, it's more broad than that. It's really to assist us with uh, incurring better and more affordable housing. But the way that I think we're going to utilize it is to consult with a consultant, housing consultant, an expert in this. And we haven't, I don't have all the details for you yet, but it, it works out very well with our master plan update, which is something that I, I highlighted in the application itself. Um, so we've been awarded $50,000. That money will go towards uh, securing um, uh, an eligible consultant to come in and help us with our housing issue. And I'm hoping that we can roll in the short-term rentals, uh, the different types of housing. We've talked about tiny homes, geodesic domes, uh, cluster developments of tiny homes. I'm hoping that we can touch on all those things to affect uh, affordability in our community within the confines of the building codes and, and everything else. So I'm um, super excited about that and I will provide you with more updates and detail as I am able to. Um, the first thing I need to do is to get back into that system, uh, one system and sign a letter of intent that we will accept it. So um, pretty exciting. I, I'm not sure if any other communities in the area received the grant as well. The, the funding was just released on January 16th, so to be awarded, you know, the second week of February, I think they wanted to get the money out pretty quickly. Um, and then Eric's included his existing short-term rental listed maps for you, and then we also included the ZBA findings from the January 25th, uh, 2024 meeting. Can Can you um talk a little bit about this? I um. <coughs> It was it was denied just it was denied because it was late. No, that was an ancillary <coughs> reason. Okay, um, so what was the, the real main, reason? The main reason is that uh, specifically in the zoning ordinance, um, the language says that a decision on a PUD cannot be appealed to the ZBA. Okay, I was I was having difficulty figuring it out, yeah. and it appears here. That, that it was denied because it was late when I read it. And I read it a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Well, item, item four. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, what? Mm -hmm. it, it, I feel like they should have stated why they were denying it. It, it does, item four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No part of the PUD process of the approved site plans may be appealed. Right, I, I, I saw that part, but I felt like the person telling me what happened there was um, maybe I wasn't listening clearly to what they were saying, but so then why did it even move forward to that far? Well, anybody <laughs> has the right to appeal and, and to submit their appeal. We, we held the public hearing per the petitioner's request and that was it. That was the, those were the findings. So they voted three yes and two no. Correct. I think there were two ZBA members that thought that there was some validity to the appeal um, and or maybe the time the timeliness thing didn't shouldn't apply but according to attorney Zappa you know that's basically in violation of our ordinance because the ordinance explicitly says that a PUD cannot a decision by the planning commission on the PUD cannot be appealed to the ZBA. So it's final. Is that true or can he take it farther? No, it can be appealed now to circuit court. Okay. Uh, we haven't heard anything yet that's been filed, but uh, we'll, we'll keep the planning commission posted on that. Okay, thank you. So let me, in, in theory though, so the, the ZBA, they must have had this in front of them and they discussed it and they came up with these <coughs> findings of fact, basically is what these are. That's correct. So, and they vote, so theoretically, what if they voted 4-1 that no, they, sh they should be able to appeal it? Then what happens? Um, then our attorney says, no boys, you're wrong? What was the vote for? Yes, I thought 
that's what. Well, I mean, essentially the the aggrieved party or the petitioner of the appeal yeah. wanted it reverted back to the planning commission. So, mm -hmm. I guess that would have been the ultimate situation had had the appeal been supported by the ZBA, but. Um, We'd have, we'd have, we, we could have said, hey, according to, you know, Section 1306, you don't have any right to do this, to, to, to you know, hear it at the Zoning Board of Appeals to determine whether it should be sent back to, you know, the Planning Commission. That's ultimately what it came down yeah, to. Yeah, but I mean, 3-2, that's kind of close. Mm -hmm. It was, and especially because uh, <laughs> Jim Johnson, Planning Commission chairperson, had to sit out of the public hearing and we had our alternate come up, uh, Mr. Becker, and he, you know, heard everything, and um, and he was one of the the A votes. So, um, and then you, on the other side of that, you had um, John Marks. Well, John Marks, of course, is a board member. Um, Willie Truscott from Trowbridge, and then you had also um, Pete Lover. No, well, Pete, La Pete LaRue was, ended up being the chairperson of the ZBA. Um, I'm trying to think of the fifth member. Who, Graves? Mr. Graves, who voted, um, I'm sorry, didn't vote, spoke publicly against the project, and then is on the ZBA as well, and he was one of the native votes. So that made sense. And then Pete was the other neighbor. To be continued. Thank you. Yeah, right. As long as we're not going to jail. Well, it's a little bit confusing to me, but you know, maybe it'll all come out in the end. Moving on to reports. Township board. Oh, the township board. Let's see. It wasn't very, there wasn't very much going on, I don't think. Maybe I wasn't even there, Bethany. I can't remember. Oh, I was there. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. 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 You should see a raise, but I said that last time. Yeah. Jason, do you hear anything? No. Uh, I, I didn't You've been out for two weeks. I didn't you didn't hear anything. Meeting, no. Yeah. We usually provide our report, planning and zoning report on the second meeting of yours per, yeah. per month. So. Uh, the rec committee will meet um, next week, Tuesday, for the first time in a while. February meeting of the road, co road committee was canceled due to lack of business, and our next meeting is the first week of March. Uh, and then planning and zoning report. Um, they've had some interesting conversations with uh, a couple developers or brokers from outside the area that are interested in some of our properties. Um, those conversations continue. Uh, of course, we submitted the grant and we're awarded that grant. Um, I've been out sick for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I really haven't been this sick. This is my 13th year at the township. I I've never taken that many sick days ever in my life. So yeah, I don't know, weird stuff going around. Um, but yeah, totally down and out there. So I'll get back to you with a more thorough report at our next meeting, but essentially just getting back into uh, the swing of things and obviously thankful to Eric for keeping everything going uh, while I was out. So um, nothing earth shattering at this time to report to you. Fair enough. Announcements. None. Steve, no announcements. Okay, public comment, as there is no public. Moving on to additional comments by the planning commissioners. Uh, went up to Winter Carnival, it was still lovely. <laughs> Great day, good to be up to Keweenaw. And they don't have much snow either, huh? No, they trucked it in. Of course, they make snow on Mount Ripley, so they had an endless yeah, supply. Yeah, wow. Winter. Yeah, it, wow. It, it's an awful winter. If you're, if it, well, you know, if you got a ski hill or a snowmobile dealership, it's like being a farmer. You know, you just got to count on the weather. So Marquette um, Township will again sponsor Community Day. It will be August 3rd. Um, 
It will be um, focused on family fun. So, yeah, probably model it after last year's, and we'll, we'll see. I think it's great, Jason, that you got awarded that grant money. So thank you for your Yeah, it's one of those things, you know, we're constantly chasing funds, but um, they said you had to be a redevelopment ready community which we're not and then they had another stipulation that you had to have some redevelopment ready meetings that have taken place which we haven't um, some of those things from MEDC and, and Mishta we don't qualify for because we're a township as opposed to having a traditional downtown a certain number of residents we don't trigger some of those things um, but they did have a caveat in there for communities that weren't uh, redevelopment ready communities so what does it mean to be redevelopment ready you go through some certification some you um, have some meetings. policies in your land use plan through the state through the state <laughs> yeah so everything you know you're following chains of money to make you eligible for different things fortunately um this grant application uh, process had a caveat to that and we were able to kind of find a loophole to get into uh, and again i haven't heard of any other communities be being awarded around here yet so um, happy that it went through and, and looking forward to finding a, a really good I mean I've been doing this for a while now so I have an idea of some of the you know higher qualified uh, consulting firms in the state um, but certainly reaching out and and seeing put together an RFP or RFQ to see who can really help us out you know um, <laughs> One thing about consulting firms, I don't know how much it cost them to change the name of the airport at Sawyer, but I think it was tens to thirty, forty thousand dollars to change that name. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to make sure we don't spend fifty thousand dollars for a name change somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying about that? Because I mean, sometimes that can get out of hand, and a lot of money goes for what? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the key is to not tell them what your budget is. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So did you? Um, don't pay them per diem. Did you have the opportunity to go to Lake Superior Community Partnership breakfast things with um, housing? Or were you um, uh, I sick? Think, I think Lynn's part of that, if I'm not correct. Oh, did she go? Grant. Yeah. Eric oh. is kind of in the task force for sustainability. Okay. And um, I've been kind of part of this trails consortium that's um, going on too. So. so about the trails, since you mentioned that, what, did that grant get awarded? and? Or we haven't heard yet? Oh, uh, no, our grant did not. Okay, so we didn't get funded. No, we did not. So um, I've been sort of, I don't know that outspoken is the right word, but I really do recommend we continue our recreation millage. It expires um, this year. So um, I think we need, you know, I, I don't know if support from the planning commission that, yeah. or how we say to them we really want this to happen. I. I think we have a lot of opportunities, and if we don't have any money there, then we have to look somewhere else. And recreation is one of the reasons people move to this community. Yeah, I expressed that at the Joint Planning Commission and Board meeting, stating that, you know, as an example, Humboldt Township on the West End yeah. spends 80000 a year on recreation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we budget about forty. Yeah. So for it, 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 we can't... If you are successful with too many grants, then you won't get them for a while because you mm -hmm. go into that well too many times. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried to explain to the board that we have to have a different funding mechanism, whether that be a you know continuation of the millage or um, you know different budgeting out of the general fund, uh, more skewed towards recreation. But we have to have something in place because I think people expect us to have world-class pickleball courts and uh, a dog park and some things that communities of our stature should probably have and, and if we're not funding them you know we can only rely on grants for so much yeah and only the community to give so much out of their pocket true so i i don't know the process to get the to get that on the mail on the yeah, august that's a, ballot that's a board is that a board decision mm -hmm. So I can bring that forward to the, I'll, I'll ask how to get that done. We have a couple of things that need to go on August ballot. I will say that to my understanding, 
the previous recreation millage was for personnel. Um, Could have been. Building and grounds. Could have been. So if it continues, does that continue covering the building and grounds person that was funded? And then what above and beyond that can we do to start putting away a nest egg for some of these other amenities that people expect? Does, it, does the township have a tax on like hotels and, and restaurants, that kind of stuff? Not in the same way the city does. Why not? Well, we should look into that. I think they did look one time, Steve. I'll ask them again. What? You know, I travel a lot, and Jesus, there's it's taxes everywhere. coming out of your ears when you pay your hotel bill. Yeah. You pay 10 bucks for this, and 6 bucks for that, and 4 bucks for this. Mm -hmm. You know, and it goes to the municipalities, and it's just... And especially, the potential to tap. And, it, and especially if people from out of town are paying for it. The DDA is pretty robust in our community. I mean, uh, it, it really encompasses a lot of properties. Yeah. Um, so if there's opportunities within the DDA to develop some recreational opportunities, I think that could potentially be added to you know, their list of projects. And they just revised their list of projects and it was in the last board packet. And you're still getting the board packets, right? So you could, yeah, the, they asked for an updated list for us to approve their updated list and the board did approve that. So. Um, yeah, I suppose I can't say it too many times, but people do move here for the opportunities that we afford them. And uh, and I think we're really lucky because a lot of the opportunities that people use in the township are trails that we don't even maintain mm -hmm. um, or properties that we don't maintain. Sugarloaf, Hogsback, anything in the Lake Superior, you know, the Lake uh, the Superior tra Tract, excuse yeah. me. Um, Harlow Lake, the cabins. We don't maintain the them, goes on but on. we support them with our but emergency we do need services. And developments too. Mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. think, um, you know, Eric is a basketball coach for MAPS in the high school. Um, you saw what Nagani did with their indoor practice facility that was, yeah. I think, donated probably. But I mean, if you had something like that in the community or a couple more sheets of ice. A roof um, over that. You know, ice yeah. for the men's league, I think, is like two hundred dollars an hour, somewhere around there. At least. Which I've never heard of that kind of price before. It was always like every chip in ten bucks. Now it's like twenty bucks for an hour. Mm -hmm. um, so those things, you know, any more competition that we can, not competition, but I guess availability is really the, the better word. But yeah, having a you know some of these teams that you know they're going to go face downstate. They've been playing outdoor sports mm -hmm. for nine months out of the year because they have a beautiful indoor facility or something along those lines. So, I mean, as planners, we have big ideas, but it, 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 you know, it takes a lot of money to get something like that done. Not to say that there's certain people, parents, um, um, well-to-do philanthropists in the area wouldn't support, but you have to have a plan in place or at least a nesting to get going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I will talk to um, the board and see how that happens, and I will suggest that it's for. And, and there is still money, gr grant seed money, <coughs> in the budget from that we didn't spend all of that, right? Well, yeah, the ten thousand that you would have allocated towards the grant is still remain in the budget. And so we've not spent any of that. Not to my knowledge. Well, come on, Jace. <laughs> I hope you talk to the manager. He's yeah. the budget. Well, I know, but you would have to bring it to him what you would need it. For. Yeah, no, we don't. We're not going to apply again this year. Okay. All right. Well, you just never know. I keep looking for the million dollars to drop into. Yeah. You just don't know who's good at that money. Well, and I often say this, you know, somebody's not going to just walk in the door and hand the township money. But if they have a project that they're really passionate about, mm -hmm. they will donate mm -hmm. lots of money. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, one person or several people. Mm. So that, I've, I've seen it happen. Yep. Are you good? We're all done? Meeting adjourned? I'm meeting adjourned. Thank right. you. I'm sure our little playground area could use something. Oh, I forgot my homies are always stashed in my <laughs>